Hello and thank you for visiting worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com. In this video walkthrough lesson, we're going to continue our fractions module, and this is lesson 5-1.8, subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. And we're going to continue our word problem series, and you'll see these standards featured in this video. We'll be looking at this worksheet. You can go to worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com to print out a copy for yourself. You'll find it under our fractions video walkthroughs. And it's entitled Fractions Module 5-1.8, Subtracting Fractions with Unlike Denominators. We have some directions. Solve the following fractions word problem. Show your work using the Array, Area, and Mathematical, or LCM, methods. Let's take a look at this problem. We'll go through sentence by sentence, see if we can tease out these math clues. We'll read it through at once. We'll do a little close read on this, and then come back to find those clues. Carson had seven-eighths of a spool of fishing line on his reel. He lost one-fourth of that line when a lure got stuck on a log. How much line does Carson have left? So right off the bat, Carson had seven-eighths of a spool of fishing line. So he had seven-eighths of a spool of fishing line on his reel. He lost, so there's a... a clue word there. He lost, so you're probably thinking subtraction. If you were, good for you. You're right. So we lost one-fourth of that line. So one-fourth of that line that we were talking about, one-fourth of this. We lost one-fourth out of the seven-eighths he had there. When the lure got stuck in a log, and that's a little bit of story information. Uh, how much line does Carson have left? Well, look at that. As we've seen several times before in previous problems, our math job appears as a question at the end of the word problem. How much line does Carson have left? Well, that is our math job, isn't it? All right, so we want to take a look at three different methods of solving this problem. So right off the bat, I'm going to take a look at the mathematical method first. And we'll set up our problem. So we talked about it being subtraction. We'll, let's see what we can do. We, we'll take that 7 eighths of a spool of fishing line he started with. 7 eighths. And then he lost 1 fourth of it. So it said lost. So we're thinking taking away like we thought. We used to think that way in first grade. Take away. Then we went to minus or we subtract. You know. So anytime you're taking an amount away, in this case it's one-fourth, you're taking away from seven-eighths. Um, anytime you're taking away, of course, you're probably thinking subtraction. Good for you. Good for you. So we've got one-fourth that we're taking away. And the first thing you want to think about when you're adding or subtracting fractions is, are our denominators the same? Well, let's take a look. Are they the same? Well, no, they are not the same. We have eight and we have 4. They're not the same. How can we get them the same? Well, we've seen in the previous video when we added some fractions together that you might want to use the LCM method to come up with a common denominator. So you want to find that LCM. And when you're you're finding the LCM, you want to take a look at those denominators and find multiples of both 8 and multiples of 4. Let's start with 4. So in order to do that, you could just simply get start off with 4 times 1. And 4 itself is, is the first multiple of 4. Just That's how it works. We've got it could be, we've got 4 times 1 equals 4. And then we kind of move on. And we'll do 4 times 2 would be the second multiple. 4 times 2 is 8. You're probably thinking that good for you. 4 times 3 equals 12. And you might want to do a few of these first. You might be thinking you know what the first multiple would be. If you are, good. Good for you. So 4 times 4 would be 16. And now, once again, let's double check. Okay, we've got one denominator of 4 and one denominator of 8. Let's see what happens here. So, you want to do multiples of 8. So we'll do 8 times 1, and something interesting happens here. 8 times 1 is 8 itself. See that? 8 is the first multiple of 8, just like 4 is the first multiple of 4. 
Now, I've noticed something already. They have a common multiple, CM. All right, so let's see. We've got 8 times 1 is 8. And 4 times 2 is 8. So 8 is both a multiple of 8, and it's also a multiple of 4. And it happens to be the least common multiple, or the lowest common multiple. So our LCM in this case is 8. And you'll notice that whenever you have two denominators, like 4 and 8 in this case, and one is a multiple of the other, you can take the larger of the two and make that your denominator for both fractions. So we'll be making fractions with denominator, a denominator of 8. So right off the bat, you can e clearly see that 8 we start with a denominator of 8 and we end with a denominator of 8, so simply we have to think to ourselves 8 times 1 equals 8. What do you do to 8 to get 8? Well, it's the identity property, isn't it? 8 times 1 is 8. And what you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. Treat them the same. 7 times 1 equals 7. Now, we'll apply that same idea down here and we'll think to ourselves, okay, we have a denominator of 4 and 1 fourth that we're starting with. And we want to make a fraction, an equivalent fraction, that has a denominator of 8. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, 4 times what equals 8? You're probably thinking 4 times 2 equals 8. And if you go down and take a look at your work, it's right there. There's your proof. It's always a good idea to show you know what you're talking about in math. And there's your proof right there. All right, so 4 times 2 equals 8. And what you do to the denominator you must do to the numerator so we'll treat this one the same way we treated the four so one times two equals two now we can simply subtract as you've seen with adding subtracting fractions if your denominators are the same you can simply deal with the numerators and that's what we're going to do so we'll keep the same denominator of eight and we'll subtract two from seven seven minus two equals five so you've got your answer there. And we'll put that in words later, a little bit later on. How much line does Carson have left? Well, he's got 5 eighths of a spool of fishing line. Okay. So now we've, we've, we've shown this work using the mathematical method. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the area, or the area model. Sometimes we think of rectangular arrays. That's another way to talk about or describe what we're going to do next. So again, so we'll start, we've got 7 eighths minus 1 fourth. Hmm. So you might be thinking, okay, well I, I could start with a rectangle. I mean it could be really any shape. It could be a, a circle that would work fine too. Um, let's take a look. We've been using rectangles and square-like figures in our previous example, so let's continue doing that. Now, if we wanted to show 7 eighths, we'd have to show 8 equal parts. That's what our denominator tells us. That's the denominator's job to tell us how many equal parts makes up one whole. In this case, it's 8, so we have to draw 8 equivalent sections, or 8 equal parts. Uh, so far, we've got 4. We want to have twice as many, so we're going to have to divide those in half again. There we go, we've got eighths. All right, so now we have seven eighths. Three eighths, four, that would be one half, wouldn't it? Four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, and seven eighths. So that was our initial fraction. So we had seven eighths we started with. Let's just write this over here, seven well, let's write it a different way. Sometimes you see fractions written this way as well. 7 eighths. Okay, we started with 7 eighths. And we needed to take away 1 fourth. Okay, well, if I split that in half, it would be 2 equal parts. And our denominator is saying we need 4. So, well, if we've got 2. We need to split each of those in half. And now we have 4 equal parts. And we want to want to show that we have one out of four or one fourth like our denominator tells us okay we shaded in one for one fourth and we shaded in seven 
oops, let me shade it in, shade it in 7 out of 8 to show 7 eighths. All right, so now we had it 1 fourth here. It's our original uh, fraction that we're taking away from 7 eighths. Okay, so now how did we, how could we show equal pieces? I mean, like we said before, you can't subtract or add fractions unless those denominators are the same. And they are not the same, so we need to make them the same. So you could probably see that you would just simply subdivide these sections in half again. And now we're making eight equal parts. So one fourth we've seen is now equal to, let's see, one two out of eight. So that's two eighths. Ah, now we're talking. We, can, we have seven eighths, and we can easily subtract two eighths from that. You can probably do a little mental subtraction there. We've shown our work over here. Seven eighths minus two eighths, and we are again showing five eighths. So if we started with seven eighths, and we let's let's take away two. All right, we'll take away two eighths. So look at this. We'll take away one eighth, and then two eighths. And you can see we're left with one, two, three, four, five eighths, and that was our answer, wasn't it? All right. Now let's take a look at the array method. Now the array method. We'll take a, a little different approach to this. Um, we've got seven eighths and and two eighths that we started with. So why don't we just draw one array with eight equal parts? Since uh, we can really, you know, we'll prove this part of our answer. We've got seven eighths. And we want to take away two eighths. So let's show our seven eighths over here. So we've got one out of eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. And we want to take away two eighths, or two out of every, I'm sorry, one out of every four. So we could think of it as one-fourth, or we could think of it as two-eighths. So let's try the one-fourth and see what that looks like. If we took away one out of every four, so I'm thinking, okay, there's one out of this four, and there's one out of this group of four, it would really turn out to be two out of eighths. So you can see that if we started with seven-eighths, and we subtracted two-eighths, or one out of every four would also be equivalent to two eighths. You could see that we, once again, we have five eighths remaining. Look at that. So now, in order to make a complete answer, we really wanted to make sure we'll go up and check. We solved our math job. How much line does Carson have left? We started with seven eighths of a spool of fishing line, and we took away one fourth that he lost on that log. Okay, so let's see put that in words. Carson has five eighths of what was our, our unit here? We're talking what were we talking about? Oh, five eighths of what? Well look back at the problem. It's always okay to do that. Well, we started with seven eighths of a spool of fishing line, so that's what we're talking about now. He has five eighths of a spool of fishing line. And once again, we showed our work using numbers in the LCM method, pictures with both the rectangular area model, and words. All right, we've described what we, what our answer would be, or our solution would be, and that makes a well-rounded answer. Take a look at that. So there you go. There's a quick look at subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Thanks for checking out
worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com, and we'll see you again next time.